A semester unlike any other is coming to a close. The old way of traditional um, learning has changed literally overnight. It felt so weird not being able to run up and hug friends and teachers. From before the first day. I anxious to see my friends. We really have to prepare and like look at stuff differently. To the final bell. It has been a week going full virtual. We've seen families adapt. If school's going to be a little bit weird this year, we're going to do something a little different. Struggle. For the first time in the classroom, I've been scared. And succeed. I think they're good. My son is learning and he is actually thriving in this virtual environment. This is new to everyone, so we're gonna get through it. We're gonna make it. We made a commitment this summer to spend this school year keeping kids in East Tennessee connected during what promised to be a challenging school year for many. We've covered everything from the spread of the virus to struggles for teachers, workers inside schools, to education gaps and inequalities highlighted by the necessity for some at-risk students to learn from home. As of tonight, more than 6,300 East Tennessee students and teachers have tested positive this school year for COVID-19. This map shows the number of cases per thousand students and staff in every county. The darker colored counties have more cases per capita. Morgan Scott and Anderson are among the worst. Union, Granger and Cock counties see the fewest cases so far. But the impact of this virus on the school year started last spring. To remind us how we arrived at this point, we turn first to 10 News reporter Gabrielle Hayes for a look back over the challenges of the last nine months. East Tennessee students only had about three months of school before class became empty. In terms of uh, what the school day, it's going to be different, obviously, uh, and people just need to, to need to understand it's not going to look like it's always looked. On March 24th, Governor Bill Lee asked schools to close for a month, but students would not head back for more than five. Today, I'm officially recommending that schools remain closed through the end of the school year. The extended closure meant school systems had to pivot, and so did parents, both learning how to work from home and facilitate virtual learning. Hey, this is all just a complete adjustment and you just got to be patient and figure out how to do that best. The closures also brought up serious internet access inequities, highlighting how broad parts of East Tennessee have little to no connectivity. In our area, because we, our technology is so outdated and we don't have the uh, high speed internet that is required. Some families forced to drive almost 30 minutes daily just to see Wi-Fi bars pop up on their computers. We have found it difficult and trying not having access to the internet. School systems saw this as a key problem. Many passed plans to become one-to-one. -one. Others sent home packets each week, hoping to reach those students who needed it most. So I think it um, has some flaws, but I think that it's a responsible move. Summer break meant planning for the fall. School leaders tried to figure out how to open and if they would even open at all. Many districts released plans late in the summer, most with both an in-person virtual option, which again meant more difficult decisions for parents. Do I send him back and allow him to have more of a normal year or do I keep him home where he is clearly doing well? As for COVID cases in the schools, well, they continued with spring semester right around the corner and the uncertainty of a global pandemic, the state of education in 2021 could still look a little different. And I'm still literally just weighing all my options. In Knoxville, I'm Gabrielle Hayes. South Knoxville Elementary sits at the core of the urban revitalization on that side of the river. It's a neighborhood of contrasts where luxury Riverview apartments sit within walking distance of a school where many students can see Neyland Stadium from the car drop off line, but their families can't afford season tickets to Tennessee football. South Knoxville Elementary. Home of the Bears, built in 1955, it's small, roughly 40 staff, 175 students, including 55 who opted to learn virtually at the start of the year. Almost 30% of that community school is racially diverse. The latest school report card shows its academic success rate improving slowly in recent years. Teachers knew 2020 would be a test, and a handful of SK SKE educators are helping us document their year, and here is how it started. 
think you are good. The first day of school at South Knoxville Elementary in 2020 looks different than any other in its 65-year history. The signs, the masks, and day one delayed a week to late August, helping 40 staffers plan and prepare for teaching in a pandemic. He's a little nervous. <laughs> and a lot, he's excited, nervous. He's a whole lot of things right now. Like many classmates, six-year-old Elijah faced back-to-school jitters, parting at the door with mom and dad to walk into first grade for the first time. It's the August 24th, 2020, uh, first day back at SKE. Have a great day. A familiar face leads the welcome back. Dr. Tana Nicely is marking her seventh year as principal and 30th year in education, having taught every grade except for first. Uh, everybody seems happy. I've visited all the classrooms, both virtually and in person. Two weeks before the start of classes, Dr. Nicely outlined her worries, encouragement, and expectations. Just making sure that our kids are, feel safe and are safe and our staff same way. This is one of the sweetest schools I've ever had the opportunity to work for. Uh, hardworking staff, hardworking community. Uh, in fact, the community reached out to me this morning and said, what else can we do to help you all? They know that we're struggling. They know that our hearts are out, you know, and, and uh, but they want to make sure that we feel successful too, as, along with the children. And that means a whole lot. What's that first day going to be like for you? Very emotional. Um, I can't wait. I cannot wait to be here. I will not sleep the night before. Uh, and just being able to, you know, socially distance but still love on my kids. That's going to be the challenge for me. That late summer day, we also heard from five teachers. All agreed to share their experience throughout the uncertain fall. A little more prep work. Ann Leffler, fifth grade, 21 years as a teacher. As I came into teaching and there was one computer in the classroom and there we barely even used email. And in the years that I've taught, it's exploded. Scotty Johnson, second grade, seven years as a teacher. I think it'll be more challenging for me this year compared to what I usually do, but I just want, I want them to know that they're going to be safe and they're going to be took care of and, and they're going to have fun. The, the only issue I think I anticipate is, you know, that issue of making sure everybody's online at the right time and things like that. So. Worst case? I'm making phone calls and asking, hey, you know, your child needs to be online right now. Jessica Maynard, 12 years as a teacher, first year all virtual. Her 13 first graders won't even set foot in this classroom. Um, a lot of people, you know, were nervous about, especially kindergarten, first and second, being able to navigate the computers, but it's been my experience, they know it better than most adults. So, <laughs> yeah. Michael Rogers, 27 years in special ed, five in class and two virtual to start. And, and I think that, that we need grace this year, you know, for teachers to be able to, to kind of say, you know what, that didn't go well. Um, let's try it again. What's it like to say I'm a first year teacher? Oh, it's been a dream come true. And Dallas Buckner, first grade, first year in the classroom. Uh, best case scenario is we go on green and everything's normal. Worst case scenario, we go on red and I have to go <laughs> be a virtual teacher as well. Yeah, you don't want to do that. I really don't. It, I spent five years in college to get to this point right here, and it would crush me if we had to go to virtual. So what happened? We asked those teachers to use their iPads, their cell phones, to record weekly updates, the good, the bad, what stood out after week one, week two, right up until today. You can see how they celebrated Halloween to how they dealt with shifting to all online after a COVID-19 scare last month. Also, what parents think of the year so far. That is in our full documentary of the first half of the year online right now at WVIR.com.